I'm back with another part of our accounting series video. And in this one, we get to know about invoices. Topics to be covered. Definition of an invoice. Basics of an invoice. Purpose and benefit of an invoice. Types of invoices and e-invoicing. Invoices An invoice, bill or tab is a commercial document issued by a seller to a buyer relating to a sales transaction and indicating the products, quantities and agreed upon prices for products or services the seller had provided the buyer. Payment terms are usually stated on the invoice. Companies need to deliver invoices in order to demand payments. An invoice is a legally binding agreement showing both parties consent to the quoted price and payment conditions. However, there are other benefits of using invoices. The basics of an invoice An invoice must state it is an invoice on the face of the bill. It typically has a unique identifier called the invoice number that is useful for internal and external reference. An invoice typically contains contact information for the seller or service provider or both. Payment terms may be outlined on the invoice as well as the information relating to any discounts early payment details or finance charges assessed for late payments. It also presents the unit cost of an item, total units purchased, freight, handling, shipping and associated tax charges and it outlines the total amount owed. Elements of invoice Number 1. The word invoice Number 2. Invoice number Number 3. Date of service rendered Number 4. Date of sending invoice Number 5. Contact and name of organization or seller Number 6. Name and contact of buyer Terms and conditions A line detailing each product or service Cost per unit of product Tax rates Total amount owed with currency, etc. Purpose and benefit of using an invoice For accounting, invoices are used as a source document. Invoices are primarily used for keeping track of all the sales transaction by any business organization with its customers. It is issued by every business and professional to keep track of sales made and services provided. Businesses use invoices for several reasons such as follows. Number 1. Maintaining records To keep an account of the sale or supplies. The most important benefit of an invoice is the ability to keep a legal record of the sale. This makes it possible to find out when a good was sold, who bought it and who sold it. Number 2. Payment Tracking An invoice is an invaluable tool for accounting. Invoice forms the basis for requesting clients or customers to make payments on time. It helps both the seller and the buyer to keep track of their payments and amounts owed. Number 3. Inventory Tracking To track the inventory of the business, number of items sold, stock available or closing stock. Number 4. Tax Calculation Recording and maintaining all sale invoices help the company report its income and ensure that it's paid the proper amount of taxes. Number 5. Legal Protection 
A proper invoice is legal proof of an agreement between the buyer and seller on a set price. It protects the merchant from fraudulent lawsuits. Number 6. Business Analytics Analyzing invoices can help businesses gather information from their customers, buying patterns and identify trends, popular products, peak buying times and more. This helps to develop effective marketing strategies and invoice can be used as historical data to predict future revenue. Types of invoice Invoices used for one-time transactions Here are the different types of invoices used in simple transactions between a buyer and a seller or service provider. Number 1. Pro forma invoice a pro forma invoice is an estimated invoice that the seller sends to the buyer prior to providing any goods or services. It states the estimated cost, delivery date and other details about the goods to be delivered or the services to be completed. After screening the pro forma invoice, the buyer gives the green light to the seller to start working on their site to the deliverables. Some of the fields mentioned in the pro forma invoice are the items to be sold, their quantity and price, delivery date and the shipping address. Number 2. Sales invoice or regular invoice This is what we classically think of when we hear the term invoice. A sales invoice gets sent to a buyer to request payment for a product or service. It contains fields such as seller information, buyer's address, delivery date, payment terms, items and their rates, and the total price. It also has information the buyer can use to make payments such as bank details and payment links. Once the payment has been made, the invoice acts as a legal record of the transaction. Number 3. Overdue Invoice An overdue invoice is an invoice that is past its due date. When an invoice is sent, a due date for payment is often mentioned. When the buyer fails to complete the payment within this stipulated date, the sales invoice becomes an overdue invoice and the buyer becomes a defaulter. The seller can do any of the following. Send payment reminders and notification about late fees. Take legal action. Wave off the invoice. Number 4. Consolidated Invoice A consolidated invoice groups existing invoices under the same customer's name and compiles them into a single invoice with one grand total. This saves the buyer a lot of time since they don't have to pay for each invoice individually. Invoices used in projects When working on a project, you may need to deploy a more elaborate invoicing process. Take a look at the types of invoices used in projects. Retainer Invoice A retainer invoice is sent to a buyer to collect prepayments for a task that will be done in the near future. The amount mentioned in the retainer invoice is paid by a client to reserve and have access to a business services as required in the future. This is also common when collecting advance payments needed for capital or logistics or as protection against cancellation. Interim Invoice Interim invoices are partial invoices that contain only a portion of the final invoices fee to help fund the project and cover the operational expenses. Interim invoices are also used for larger, more expensive projects because the total amount can be broken down into smaller invoices to make it more affordable. The interim invoice amount is determined by the percentage of work completed or on the milestones achieved throughout the project. Timesheet Invoice 
टाइम शीट इन वॉइसेज आर यूज वेन बिजनेसेस चार्ज क्लाइंट बेस्ड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ आवर्स देर एम्प्लॉयज वर्क ऑन द प्रोजेक्ट टाइम शीट इन वॉइसेज जनरली अप्लाई फॉर सर्विसेज and are calculated by defining each employees per hour charges and then multiplying them with the total hours worked on the project some of the elements that are included in the time sheet invoices are the tasks worked on hourly charges total hours worked the start and end date of the project and administrative fees final invoice A final invoice is the last invoice sent at the end of the project that highlights the total amount owed to the product or service provided. This total is calculated by deducting the retainer invoice and interim invoice amounts from the total amount owed. Like a regular invoice, the final invoice has fields like payment terms, the invoice creation date, items, subtotal deductions retainer and interim invoice totals and the invoice total invoices used as memos the following types of invoices are not used for sales but to make corrections to past transaction via credit and debit credit memo contrary to regular business transactions where the buyer pays the seller A credit memo is used when the seller owes the buyer money. This credit memo is a document sent to the buyer that acknowledges the owed amount and issues a form of credit to the buyer. The buyer can later use these issued credits on future purchases from the same seller. Credit notes are normally issued when the buyer wants to cancel an order. The buyer wants to return a product. The buyer is not satisfied with a product or service. The buyer has received damaged products. The buyer needs to be compensated for an invoicing error. The seller wants to offer a discount to the buyer on their next purchase. Debit memo. A debit memo is issued to clients to make changes to past invoices and increase the total amount owed by the client to the business it's similar to a sale invoice but the only difference is a sales invoice is sent when a product or service is sold and a debit memo is sent to make adjustments to invoice totals of previously sold products or services mixed memo invoice a mixed invoice combines both the items in a credit memo and a debit memo and shows the aggregate as the total other invoices the following types of invoices are used in specific scenarios when needed commercial invoice a commercial invoice is a document created as proof of an international transaction between a buyer and a seller for legal purposes it can primarily be used to calculate tariffs determine taxes and obtain customs clearance for the shipment of goods in and out of a country recurring invoice a recurring invoice is an invoice that is sent on a recurring basis for products or services offered repeatedly recurring invoices are generally sent on a weekly monthly or yearly basis and the customer needs to make sure the invoices are paid on time to continue using the product or service some examples of scenarios where recurring invoices are applicable are gyms internet service providers music and video streaming services and other saas products e invoicing Since the advent of the computer era, people and businesses have found it easier to rely on electronic invoicing as an alternative to paper documents. E-invoicing helps you with data reconciliation and accuracy during manual data entry. It allows interoperability 
across businesses. You can track the invoices in real time. The invoice details will be auto populated on tax return forms and e-way bills, making the tax return process easy. That's why invoicing is used mandatorily in many parts of the world for B2B transactions. Electronic invoicing or e-invoicing is a form of electronic billing to generate a store and monitor transaction related documents between parties and ensure the terms of their agreements are fulfilled. These e-documents may include invoices and receipts, purchase orders, debit and credit notes, payment terms and in instructions, and remittance slips. Digital invoices are normally sent via email, web page, or app. Advantages include the following. Permanence and resistance to physical damage. Ease of searching and sorting for a specific name, terms, or dates. Increased auditability. The ability to print or reproduce on demand. The ability for data collection and business intelligence. Reduction of paper use E-invoicing includes several technologies and entry options and is used as a general term to describe any method by which an invoice is electronically presented to a customer for payment. That's all for this video. Your feedback will be highly appreciated and will help us to improve the content. Join us in the next video to get to know the rules of recording a business transaction. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for latest updates.